Hey guys, this is Erin from Geek with Style. Uh, with this video, I'd like to show you how you can watermark your photos using a program called Snagit. Snagit's a really cool tool. Uh, you can use it to screen capture your desktop. You can create quick demo videos like what I'm doing right now. Uh, you can use it to enhance images that you have already, uh, such with uh, stamps, which are little uh, comic images like this, or you can um, add text or effects which um, say you take an image in a dark area you can brighten up the photo or if there's a little bit of blurriness involved in the photo you can sharpen it and uh, for the purpose of this video though we're going to uh, discuss watermarking now the reason why watermarking is becoming such a necessary thing these days is because of programs like Pinterest and if you've never heard of Pinterest before, I suggest dropping your school books or your uh, work that you brought home. Go online, go to Pinterest.com and just check it out because it's such a fun and uh, very informative tool. Uh, now all these images here are sourced by Tumblr.com and I'm going to show you why that's such a bad thing. And um, why, meanwhile, while people are still going to use Tumblr to collect images that they like, we can um, still have these images show the originating location, which is your blog or your photography uh, portfolio online, or um, essentially just have this picture come back to you. Uh, for instance, this thing called a fish's eddy. I don't know what it is. It looks cool. I guess it's a collectible. I'm not sure. But if I clicked on the image, which I'm supposed to be able to do to find the originating information from it, I can't. It takes me to this place called Tumblr. I don't have an account. I'm not going to sign up for an account, so I'm SOL with this. And again, all these images are the same thing. If I wanted to find the recipe for this really neat looking treat, I can't. If I click on the image, it takes me to Tumblr. Now, um, the people who own these images, well not own, but the ones that have saved it to their accounts, they, there is a way for them to edit the image and put in the right URL if they know what it is. But if they don't, they're not going to care, I guess. So let's uh, get into watermarking our own photos so that should this happen to us, should this be your really cool photo with a clutch, when a person clicks on this, if it still ends up taking the person to Tumblr, what we hope is that, as what L Magazine has done, we can use um, a watermarking image to describe exactly where this photo came from. So, let's uh, open up the Snagit editor. When I open up Snagit, I first get this window that shows me a bunch of capture profiles. So when I want to capture an image, video, or even text, as you see at the bottom here, it's the uh, video capturing settings because, well, I'm creating a video demo at the moment. But what we want to do is watermark an image, so I'm going to open up the Snagit editor. Now, for a very quick opening program, this has a lot of really great tools for uh, enhancing your images, whether you want it for your blog or for a portfolio or even for your Facebook account. If you want to enhance images, you have a whole range of tools here in order to do so. There's stamps, there's these little word bubbles, you can add text, even line art. Um, but what I want to do for this image is first brighten it up because when I took it, it was in a very dark area. So I'm going to click on Histo Contrast. And as you see, when I roll over these different percentages, the image gets brighter. Um, sometimes even too bright if you go at 100%. So what I'm going to use is 50%. And then what we want to do is watermark this image so that when I put it on my blog, if it happens to get to Pinterest, people will know this came from my blog and if in, instead of uh, different sites such as Tumblr. Um, this is just a quick watermark button that you click on and it has these basic settings. And you can see right at the bottom here, there's already a watermarking outline. Now there's, as it shows, there's two different display effects. There's underlay and then there's overlay. Overlay can be used as a, a way to add your logo to an image. So if you're a business or a photographer and you want to add a business card type image on top of the product or your portfolio image, what you would want to use is overlay because this gives you the full image. But if you're using the uh, watermarking to 
uh, display ownership over a photo, say, such as a blog, or um, if you take pictures of your recipe um, creations or of your household and you want to say, these are my photos from my blog, you can use the underlay effect in order to create an outline. So you, the person who's viewing the picture can see the whole picture, but still there is a way to say this is where it came from, this is mine. So what I'm going to do is um, change the picture of this, of this watermark because that's not the right one for this usage. Um, I'm not selling the image, which um, is what I would use this type of logo for. I want to say that this came from Geek with Style. So um, this is the logo that I use at the top of my website, and this is the one that I would want to use for my images. Uh, and then there's advanced settings. So as you can see, the image changed right away. Well, actually, there's two images there. I'm going to just close that. I'm going to hit Control Z once and then twice to get rid of both images, and then click on Watermark again. Control Z is the same as Undo. There's also an Undo arrow at the top here if you ever need to change a setting. So again, I'm going to click on Advanced Settings. Now, um, it's a little bit too small for me, so what I'm going to do first is change the size. So as you can see, just by dragging the, um, the scroll bar across up to 80%, I've made a, a watermark that takes up the entire width of the photo, which is, for this instance, this is what I want at the moment. But it's also maybe a little bit too light. I'm not sure if this is the right amount of watermarking that I want to put onto it. So this depth uh, scroll here is set at 500. If I scroll up a little bit, it darkens the watermark a little bit. If I go down, then again, it makes it a little bit more invisible, to, even to a point where you can't truly see it. So what I'm going to do is maybe make it to 525. And for me, that's okay. I also can change the direction of the uh, black outlining. For right now, it's called north. It goes through north, south, east, west, and then north, east, and so forth. So as you see, the, the outlining has changed a little bit. If I choose east, again, it's changed. So what it does, it's kind of like a dial. It just moves the uh, black outlining around the image to a point where you're satisfied of where you want, how you want the outline to look. So, um, I'm just gonna go through them all. Actually, I like southwest. Let's just see what west and northwest sound look like. Actually, that one's really good too. Maybe I'll stick it with northwest for the moment. Um, as I said before, you can we changed the size so that it takes up the whole width of this image, but you can also move where the image sits. So um, if I wanted it on half the page, or it starts at 0%, with 0 being at the right end of the page. And then there's the vertical offset. And again, you're just playing with percentages until you get the right spot that you want this to sit. So I'm going to keep it like that, and then uh, this also the keep aspect ratio means that when you were working with changing the size of the image, it affected both the height and the width, which is generally what you want to use in most cases. So I'm going to close that, and there's my watermark. So I'm going to do this once more uh, with my second image just to go through this all again. Um, with this one, it's a very large image, so first I want to resize it. And uh, most of my images for my blogs are 800 pixels. So I'm going to change the height and width to 800 and then hit OK. Now I also want to change the histo contrast again because it was a very dark room when I was doing this. So I can choose, hmm, I'll probably go with 25% for this one. And then again, I'll want to choose the watermark. Now. <laughs> this isn't my Olympic medal, <laughs> too bad, but for this one I'm going to uh, select the logo as, as if I was selling this. Let's remove the first image. Yeah. 
and create an overlay. Now, say I had a metal and I wanted to sell it on eBay. <laughs> I can change the site, the size, and what what this had done was kept my um, what I had chose for effects from the last image. So if I had a batch of images that I wanted to watermark, I can have them all lined up at the bottom here, have them all opened up, and then just quickly uh, hit the watermark button for each one, and it will keep the same settings. So it's very helpful when you're wanting to make a uniform look with all of your images. So I'm just going to change the vertical to make it lower and the horizontal and then I'll take this to eBay and say that I'm selling a, an Olympic medal which would be great. So again if you're using uh, watermarking to sell your products or to, just to show that you are a photographer and this is um, the type of images that you sell this is a great way to add a business card to your images so people know where this come from. Then I'm going to hit close and then all I have to do is hit the save button and it's done. Okay so that's it for this tutorial. Um, if you have any questions or comments about this video or if you would like me to cover anything about Snagit because I'm hoping to do some more videos about this uh, really awesome program, you can go to geekwithstyle.ca and click the contact me button and it'll show up this little window that you could fill out. Uh, anyways, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you guys online sometime.